Welcome everyone to the Build It Bright Crafting Your Solar Marketing Program webinar. I am Glenna Wiseman with Identity3, working with Energy Trust of Oregon, and we are so delighted to have you, quote, in the room here today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us um, through this whole process that we've been doing since January in this current series, and we're just delighted to uh, review with you, add some new material, and look at it, a, a campaign to help you and address uh, some marketing pain points today. <clears throat> so we have got a packed schedule, packed content. Um, so there is a Q&A and a chat uh, function in our Zoom platform here. Please take advantage of that and uh, let me know your thoughts. We will get to them um, if we've got time today, uh, we, will, uh, we always try to answer all the questions live, and then we also will email or chat out on our hashtag marketing solar chat. So uh, just welcome, sit tight, and let's get going here. All right, but first a big thank you to Energy Trust of Oregon. Uh, Jenny Hall and her team there have worked hard on this program actually for quite a long time to get it ready. Uh, to launch in January, and we just thank them for supporting this content, um, particularly valuable for small and uh, medium-sized solar installers. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about Energy Trust of Oregon as we get going here. Uh, Energy Trust is an independent nonprofit organization dedicated to helping utility customers benefit from saving energy and generating renewable power. This solar marketing training series for installers is part of the nonprofit's ongoing efforts to reduce solar costs and increase solar installations in Oregon. And uh, we are just very blessed and greatly um, enhanced to have this uh, material available for solar installers, really, no matter where you are. So let's take a look at um, where you can find, oops, excuse me, where you can find the program online. Wow, okay, here we go. This is a list, and we put this list up each time to remind you what the topics are that are available to you and that you can get them on the energytrust.org business development page. When we publish the slides, we will have these as live links so that you can get to each one of them and also give you some more links as we get to the end of the program today. So today we are uh, really doing the audacious <laughs> effort of reviewing what we've done here quickly and uh, helping you to put it all together uh, by looking at one particular campaign and uh, reminding you of all of the benefits of the program tools. So here's our schedule. We're going to do, as I said, a quick review of the program tools that are available to you. We've also tweeted them out to you um, on hashtag marketing solar um, on Twitter. You, there's also a link to today's tool, the new tool that we're releasing this week. Um, there, that's a link up for that is in your webinar registration email. And uh, then we're going to dive into that solar dedication campaign development tool, also called Solar Ribbon Cuttings. Uh, so I'm really excited about this because it will help you to fulfill a number of goals that many of you spoke to us about be, as being important for your marketing efforts. Uh, we're going to take a look at a sample ribbon cutting campaign. Uh, that's one of my favorites from the many that I've either done or participated in, had a role in. So we'll take a look at that, and hopefully you find that uh, helpful. And then, as I said, we're going to address three marketing pain points and some general information about uh, some helpful tips about how you can address those. Uh, so that will we'll get a chance to look at some really great research uh, from Energy Trust and another one of uh, our colleagues in the industry. All right, so I'm just checking in. We don't have any Q&A or chat yet, so thank you so much. So we're going to take a look at the tools that we have so far. And these tools really help you build your marketing program. So Build It Bright really has been about building your marketing program, building the foundation of it 
uh, with evergreen or re, you know uh, transcendent pieces that can help you it can they can also be used if you've got your marketing program together and you want to build a particular campaign so the first tool that we developed was called is called a marketing inventory tool um, and again we've got uh, um, links up on Twitter and online that you can download all of these free tools there is absolutely no reason for you to build these from scratch so this tool taking stock allows you to take an inventory of your current marketing assets and help you to set your marketing um, priorities either for the year or for the quarter or even for a particular campaign if you want to use that now all of these tools um, except one is a PDF download and as soon as you download it the PDF gives you an interactive tool capacity and um, you can use them over and over again so please take advantage of these amazing uh, materials that are available to you next in our program we looked at strategy so we've taken a stock taking stock of our marketing assets we know where we stand we've prioritized what we need to get done and then we looked at strategy now I encourage you to take a look at this tool because first of all it's really cool and second of all you can expand it you can print it big you can have other team members get involved with this but this really this tool was really designed to help you um, sharpen your positioning in the market highlight those critical things that you need to get done and you know we all just do better if we've got a reminder if we've got a road map in front of us of what we're trying to get done and when we're trying to get it done so we have this uh, the quarterly goal aspect of this tool that will help you to really bring those overarching goals down to specific deliverables uh, within a quarterly time frame let's see did I do this right okay great yes next we um, dove into who are our customers and why are they important to us and and what is their profile these this is also called the client persona um, so this is an opportunity and it's the tool is designed to uh, for each client persona that you want to do it's designed to help you work through um, who is your who are your most important customers what do they care about where can you find them what is the data that you need and um, when we worked through this in our um, presenting your best uh, campaign um, webinar we we really helped you to kind of track through how do you pull this information from your existing client data you know your existing client database uh, so that you can get really clear on who you're talking to because this is this is a really important critical part of this if you don't know who you're talking to and why you're talking to them then you your your information is um, is diffused it isn't as targeted as what you need it to be and this this particular uh, discipline impacts everything that you do from social media to online digital ads to public relations to your content that you develop for your website okay so next we moved into efficient activation and this is the this the tool that we felt that would help you the most here would be was a co-op development tool this is something that in my years of working on the installer side I really you know wish that I had taken the time to develop for myself because it there's a lot of information that goes into developing who can you get sources of funding from what are the sources what does that funding look like does it expire for example energy trust of Oregon has marketing and training development um, resources that are available to contractor allies but that those those that funding expires after a certain amount of time so you want to make sure the same with solar power world their solar world there in Oregon there there th those uh, funds are there for you but they do expire so you want to make sure that you understand the key dates and you want to get as much funding and as much resource support as you can into your activation of your campaigns so this is a tool that you can use uh, that will help you track all of these moving parts and help you ensure that when you get to the point of submitting for the for those funds that you have everything in place to do that and I also was um, always careful to track all the way through accounting to make sure that those marketing funds actually were credited to my budget so that's another thing that this uh, should help you do 
All right. So then we got to um, a, our tracking tool. So if you've, you're building all of these pieces and tracking your return on investment and what kinds of leads generate the best kind of conversions and what kinds of leads de generate um, the lowest cost, uh, cost of marketing per sale. Uh, so this particular tool is not a PDF. It's a spreadsheet. It has all the formulas embedded in it. Again, you don't have to develop this from scratch. You can use our tool. You can amend it, of course. Um, this, this particular tool gives you a quarter's worth of um, material, uh, you know, by month by month tracking that then uh, comes into a cumulative statement. It will help you to um, track marketing spend by your accounting chart of accounts so that you're coordinating with marketing and you know exactly what you've spent where. It will establish tracking by lead source, and it will help you to track the quality and the result of your lead source types. So it's really an important way, and um, you can start small. The, the, the point is to be consistent with what you're doing. All right, <clears throat> so today we're going to dive into our solar dedication campaign development tool. Um, again, this has been tweeted out on hashtag marketing solar, or you can find it on my account at Glenna Wiseman or at Identity 3 Co. Um, and so this is, you can pull it down and it is a PDF tool. So once you've pulled it down, uh, you can be, you, you'll be able to fill out all of the, um, uh, all of the slots and you'll have your tracking tool. So let's take a look at what it does. When we looked and when we got feedback from the contractor allies in Oregon, um, and thank you all for your time again um, for helping us put all of this material together and, and giving us feedback all along the way. One of the things that you, there were two things that you said that we haven't been able to really fully uh, dive into uh, in this current series. And one was that you wanted to go after more non-residential business like commercial, industrial, and public sector. And two, you wanted to do more PR. So when we were thinking about what could we do to kind of tie a nice bow around this uh, series, uh, the idea came that we should do something about ribbon cutting events, not just because it has a ribbon, but because it will help you to develop more business um, by increasing the visibility of the business that you do have in these sectors and helping those customers celebrate uh, and tell their solar story with a specific campaign. Now, these can come in all kinds of different, uh, you know, variations, of course. And um, I've got some little photos from some of the events that I have participated in as we go along here, and you'll recognize some of the names. But um, it, this is really a great way to have a beginning and an end to a campaign um, that has a lot of moving parts depending on what you're doing, but really can help you to support uh, your client. So this tool is uh, designed to help you develop your solar message or your event theme and why that's important. It will help you to identify promotional opportunities, to work on stakeholder groups, to list all of them, and to leverage online opportunities and PR opportunities. All right, this tool sections are listed here, and if you've, if you've pulled it down offline and you've got it printed out or in front of you, you see, you'll see that we start with client and project information. So again, we want to accumulate all of the information into this tool that we need to successfully develop and, um, and promote and, and manage a um, client uh, solar dedication event. Um, we want to we want to look at all of our marketing, our campaign marketing partners, and just really be open at the top of who could be involved and how they could be involved and how it would benefit the overall effort. We want to develop a campaign overview. Again, stakeholders are really important to this process, and we'll take a look at that, and the tool helps you identify those. And then we want to look at all the elements. So we've done our best to, to list all the different elements that are involved in such a campaign. And so let's start with the client and project information. So this is a snapshot of the actual tool. Um, it helps you to articulate your client information. It's really important to know whether they've got a PR firm or some kind of an outside consultant that's helping them with that to get them engaged as early as possible in the um, project. 
um, so that everybody is on the same page. Getting that core team together as early as possible is really important to your end result and of course depends on the size and the complexity of the project that you're doing. Um, you also want to, this also has team member information. I've always found it helpful to know which of the construction managers were, you know, on top of this project so I could find out when, you know, everything is happening with the project. Um, and uh, that is always helpful in terms of your internal communications. The client and project information also includes the installation. So what, when does it start? When is, does it finish? What's the projected interconnection? All of these aspects, what's the type of install? Uh, you know, really drilling down and getting all the information that you can. You may have additional sheets here, but you're going to articulate that as you work on this project. You're going to articulate that to a project fact sheet that is available online, is available to the press. So the, early, the earlier you get all of this information and everybody on the same page with what's going on with this project, the better you're going to be in pulling off a successful dedication or ribbon cutting. Really important. Now, as the solar industry has gotten um, bigger and more sophisticated, these what aspects of this solar installation are unique may come down to those things that are very regional for you. Is it a first for your company? Is it a first for the community? Is it a first for your client? Is it unique to the in industry? Does it combine other kinds of energy efficiency measures in an overall sustainability program? Is it the first in your area to use a particular type of financing program? Many of you are in states where PACE um, is either just getting started or is still new enough that your client might be financing their commercial or industrial or public sector project through PACE. And this would give you a really important promotional edge. So what you're looking for here in what aspects of this solar installation are unique are those kinds of things that are going to give you a promotional edge, are going to give you something that's newsworthy um, that you can talk about uh, in your promotional efforts. And even if you're just doing a, a press release and you're not doing necessarily a full-blown event, this is an important part of understanding what the media is going to look for in terms of, get, in terms of honoring and covering this uh, particular project. Now, let's look at the client's reasons to go solar. And the reason that we have this is so that we keep in mind that the client has specific reasons to go solar, and we want to make sure that those reasons are surfaced that they're here in this material so that we keep them front and center in terms of where this is a this is um an opportunity to help promote and shine the light on your customers uh solar uh project and so why did they go solar and we you know we know you know some of the basic reasons but there may be some reasons that are really compelling like a school um, I, I've participated in several cool uh, school events and there's a whole opportunity to do um, student education and community leadership and there's and yes of course there are the the money saving um, aspects and attributes of the solar installation but look deep look dive in and find out these really these nuggets so that you can really use those in your marketing program and those will also translate powerfully to social media and photos and all kinds of things like that all right so the next section of our tool is called the campaign marketing partners now this part of the tool is de uh, designed to help us identify those partners in the installation that would could be involved in the campaign. So top, uh, top of mind here is the module manufacturer. Many times um, the module manufacturer will get involved, they've got co-op funds, uh, they're a big part of your install budget, so you know start with them. Find out you know what can they do to help if they don't if you don't have co-op funds available through them but still reach out to them because if it's a worthy project and if it has um, you know a really great PR angle on it 
um, chances are that at the very least they will help you get it out via social media. Maybe they will do the press release out on Business Wire. Um, you know, these kinds of things that can add value to what you're doing and replace hard costs that you would have to do yourself can be just as, va as valuable as whether or not there are co-op funds available. Uh, that could translate and help you mitigate some of these campaign costs. So look at that. Inverter manufacturers, of course, uh, would be the next biggest part of it. Um, again, there's a whole section that gives you um, multiple opportunities to um, identify your marketing partners. You know, make sure that you've reached out to them. Make you know, gives you this sort of checklist approach, so that you don't leave anything uncovered in terms of additional resources that you may be able to get. Okay, so let's see. Are any other links for downloading the tools apart from this one? Yes, if you go to um, thank you for your question, Rush Ba. Rish, I probably didn't say that right, but yes, if you go to uh, identity3.com slash marketing solar, you'll see all of the tools by topic. And there's a line that says um, download interactive tool, and you can just download each one from there. But thank you for your question. Okay, so the next um, section with the campaign overview is the campaign overview. So here we're going to develop the goals and the theme for our campaign. Again, kind of like the client's goals of why they went solar in the first place, the um, campaign goals are really important to look at from, from the client's point of view. It may be that they want to promote their sustainability. It may be that they want to involve their employees and get them excited about the solar installation. Um, there's a lot of reasons that a client um, might want to um, have a solar dedication event. And so there's really, it's really important to understand what the client goals are so that you make sure that you're fulfilling those as you're moving along uh, in the process. Also, I would suggest that you figure out your top three goals. You're gonna wanna promote your company. You're gonna wanna promote the fact that you're in a commercial, a CNI or a public sector market. You're going, you wanna show good stewardship for your client's sustainability efforts, and you're gonna to wanna to generate leads. So make so by understanding what your top goals are, you can make sure that whatever mechanisms need to be in place, or whatever messaging needs to be in place to, actual, uh, to fulfill those goals are going to be available, you know, that you're actually going to get those done. Okay, so let's... Ah, thank you, Jenny Hall, you can find them here, yes. Thank you for that. Okay, Miss Jenny Hall, we're happy to have you on the line today. All right, so here is a really exciting, now I love the creative part of these campaigns. And if you develop a theme, and we're gonna dive down a little bit more in a minute on why the theme is important, you can, um, you can do so many positive things with this theme. So when you're looking at the theme idea, how does it relate to your client's business and the sustainability that they are trying to fulfill, that they're actually fulfilling with this solar install? Um, then you want to make sure that you've gone through, you, you may go through lots of ideas. It may be way more than three. You may use this as the um, opportunity to surface up or bubble up the top three most powerful themes that you have in mind and then use those to develop um, that theme with your campaign team. Um, so we're going to revisit this one in a minute, um, but let's talk for a minute about helping your client tell their solar story. Here you see a picture of a Porsche, a solar panel dedication here in Southern California uh, that I participated on and helped to lead. It was really a great um, uh, project, and there was a lot of... Uh, Porsche has, is, a, is a company that cares very deeply about their brand and how the brand is articulated. So there was very early on, we brought the whole team together from their branding and their PR group, and we made sure that everybody was on board. It's a team effort. Your best result is going to be if you get a team effort. So you want to work through, you know, what kinds of emissions reductions, environmental benefits. You want to make sure that you've articulated all of that. Um, they may be t telling the story in terms of metrics of solar today and financing options and using what kind, uh, which kind of ways are you going to use this solar installation as a pivot point to bring everybody together. 
All right. So what can the theme do? First of all, the theme can add excitement and relevancy to your event campaign. So we really are putting everything together that we've been working on the last few months and bringing it all together into let's do a solar dedication or a solar ribbon cutting because we need to understand what the client needs to accomplish. We want to understand who are all the stakeholder groups or the groups, the clients, um, the broader picture of the clients that you're going to be talking to. You want to reinforce the client's solar story. A theme can also act as kind of a rallying call. If we're excited about something, you know how important this is on social media, you might look at having a hashtag with that theme. Um, you know, would it fit into a small hashtag? Or how could you articulate out of um, that theme a hashtag? An important thing to, con to consider. The theme also acts as a cohesive element for all the activities, and it guides the graphics and the creative development. So you'll see that in our um, representative campaign. You'll see that um, coming all the way through all of the graphics. OK. So the next part of our um, solar dedication uh, tool is identifying the stakeholder groups. And this is really important. And so one of the goals here is to, to really open your mind and, and get everybody on the team discussing who are all the stakeholder groups for this solar installation. Obviously, you have the client and their, and their network, their vendors, their employees. Um, you have different business groups, different community leaders. Uh, you may have investors who are, have been involved. Uh, you know, the local PACE group, as I said, or maybe there's the bank. You know, um, many, many banks, as you know, are involved in that. Don't forget to think of them. Think of everybody who has touched this solar installation and all of the different groups that it affects in the community. Um, so this is the, the opportunity here. So. We've listed, because we've already handled the partners or the manufacturers, those are stakeholder groups as well, but they come in as partners kind of on the whole team uh, to put the event together. The stakeholder groups are the groups that you're involving in the overall event. Employees, advocates, the local green building group, USGBC, the local city and government officials. Uh, it's amazing how much you, how many plaques you can get for your customers if you reach out to um, state level uh, representatives who want to show that they're excited about renewable energy in their communities. Local businesses, the Chamber of Commerce, all those kinds of people that want to support your client in the market and when any others that you may come up with. So here's a slide. We, we can, you know, it's there for your opportunity. This was a, a ribbon cutting um, for Mitsubishi, actually, that um, involved YKK, that's a zipper company. So you see that the ribbon is made with a zipper, which is really cute. So don't, you know, look at all those kinds of details. But anyway, on employees, you could have a kickoff event. You could have employee discounts. You could have progress reports on newsletters. Um, anyway, this is just a kind of a, um, a little tickler here of all the different ways that you can engage stakeholder groups in what you're doing. <clears throat> all right, the, there is a very um, two pages or so on the tool that are related to all of the elements. And there are a lot of moving parts depending on how big an of, a, of an event that you do. There are a lot of moving parts to um, putting one of these particular campaigns together. So what we've done is given you a, is it going to be in the program? If it is, is there budget that's needed? When, what kind of budget is needed? And when is the actual date needed? So I would um, say that this is a checklist first. And then second, you can use it as a tracking tool. So you want to make sure that you don't leave anything uncovered in terms of an opportunity or get to the you know, two days before the event and figure out, oh my goodness, I don't have a printed agenda or I don't have a press kit. Or, you, know, you, you want to make sure you've got all your pieces planned from the beginning and you know exactly when they're going to come through. So we've already talked about the theme and then the graphic approach. And then here on this same slide, again, I pulled these um, snapshots off the tool itself. Uh, you want to look at employee programs. And don't forget to 
to provide, to look at, you know, does the client need information that describe this um, install in, cu in customer friendly? Like if you're doing a school, for example, what kinds of language, what kinds of images, what kinds of information? I mean, those kids are going to be excited about that um, solar install. So you have an opportunity to be very helpful and to look at what kinds of information you're providing to your client there at the school um, that would allow them to communicate that to their new to their um, students and their teachers and their the parents and you know so think it's all the way through to what kinds of information can our team provide that would allow them to tell their their solar story in customer friendly uh, ways and you of course want to create uh, a landing page um, or something like that on your website so that you can give updates uh, the next area here is the installation related you you know really a project fact sheet uh, that lists all of the key elements is you know a really a must and the sooner you get started on that the better um, here I've addressed uh, consumer appropriate description so that you're putting it in consumer language. You might look at doing a time lapse video. We've certainly done lots of those and I, I do not know what it is about time lapse videos, but everybody loves them. So you might want to consider um, setting that up, having that be part of it. You could even have it be live. I've seen that done before uh, where it's actually live from the install. Uh, certainly photos and you want to look at are you going to have some kind of a press release or some kind of groundbreaking what we're talking about here mostly is when the in when the install is already done but you want to look at um, the potential of doing some kind of press release up front what's going to happen throughout are you going to what kind of social media are you going to have what kinds of online are you going to have what kind of con you know blog content Again, just look at, you may not do all of this, but you want to just look at it and see what kinds of things can I do that really gives us the opportunity to promote this install um, and generate more leads and more business and more awareness for our company while doing good for our client. Okay, so there's a big, long, there's a big list of related to the event itself. You're going to have a lot more moving parts here than what I've got listed, but these are just the big rocks, if you will. Um, this, the attendee list. If you're inviting, a tip, if you're inviting dignitaries like state and local um, government officials, find out who, where their offices are. Who, if you don't already know this, find out who their key people are. How do you get in touch with them? Once you've got a date set up, start that process as early as possible. If nothing else, your constant drumbeat contacting them may result in um, you know a letter of appreciation from the governor maybe he or she can't make um, she in the case of Oregon um, can't make it to that particular event but they'll send a plaque and that plaque can be you know presented to your client um, on the day of the dedication and they can hang it up in their office and you know in our digital world those kinds of things are really cool because then you can also take a picture and get it out there online um, your invitation, generally you're going to want to do a digital invitation. What kind of signage? Think through all of the signage involved um, in directing people to where the solar install is. And I would also say, depending on where the install is, and we don't have it listed here, but it would be a good note for you to make, make sure that there's not any safety um, safety you know if it's up on the top of the roof if you're not if you're going to be able to get people up there is how you know have them sign a release make sure that you've covered yourself in terms of the safety issues all right photography videography catering gifts all of that kind of stuff is pretty standard but you just want to think through it and give yourself as much time as possible to put it all together and make sure all of your um, partners are properly branded press um, you know, if you're if you're working with an outside press person, make sure that you review their press list. Make sure that you understand who this the the press is going to go to. In this day and age, press is not necessarily going to show up unless you've got a really awesome big thing going on, um, and it's a slow news day. You, you know, you really need to think in terms of online, getting them the right. Um, photos, getting them the right quotes, getting them all of the information. That press release is going to be really important. Uh, you can put out a press advisory. 
um, you know, a, a couple of days before. You may call your local people. If you can get a local um, reporter to show up and do the story, that can help you get it out on a broader basis online. Um, your project fact sheet, again, is really important. Your press kit, a lot of times we put them on flash drives now. We don't print them, although you do want to have a printed agenda normally for people when they show up. But you want to coordinate that press release. Get as many of your um, uh, partners involved in that press release. Get the client quotes. Get the quotes involved. See if you can get a quote from your local dignitaries, your local government officials. You know, pack that press release with as much great information as you can. And then what you can do is you can take that press release and you can augment it with the day of photos and build a blog uh, post out of them that really puts people into the, into the place of, I've really been here. Um, the other thing to look at in terms of the social media um, for a project uh, that I was involved with for uh, Mississippi Power recently is that they did a really great job of capturing um, images from the actual um, uh, event and getting those out on Twitter. And so that really puts you in the place of if, as if you were actually there. And that, and that was a really exciting way to deal with this. Post-event. We're almost at the end of this now, folks. Post-event, thank yous. Don't, you know, close the loop. Thank everybody that showed up. Thank all the speakers. You know, I, I, re recently I was involved with one where the, digni where the client's president sent out hand-signed letters, you know, old-fashioned hard copy letters in envelopes. It was amazing. Um, so, you know, think through what are you going to do um, to thank everybody, have that all thought through from the beginning uh, um, before the event so that you're ready to go. You know, photos of the installation put up on Facebook, really great stuff. People love seeing the photos. A case study um, that you've got online. There's all different kinds of ways that you can do this. And just think it through. And then, of course, you know, how are you, how are you going to capture those leads? Now, this is assuming that you've got some kind of a lead capturing mechanism online. But if you've got this project online and you're tracking it on a page, maybe that you're continually um, um, updating, then you make sure that you've got a web to lead form or some kind of a lead capture form that you know exactly where they're coming from from your website so that you actually um, can uh, follow up with them specifically to they participate in this event. Also, make sure people sign in when they get there. If, you've, if you're inviting other businesses and other, you know, depending on what the business is or the entity is, make sure that you've got that sign-in sheet and that you've captured that sign-in sheet and that you get right back with a thank you or an email. Uh, this is a wonderful way to close the loop. Thank you for attending our event. And, um, you know, if you're interested in solar for your organization, you know, we'd love to talk with you. Okay. So let's look at a, um, a campaign of all the ones that I've done to date. Something about 60 in solar really was wonderful. Um, it's the a campaign that really brought the community together and celebrated um, the Bob's Big Boy uh, in Burbank, which is a very iconic Bob's Big Boy. They were celebrating their 60th anniversary by going solar. And that... And the reason that I'm bringing this one up is because we really were able to come across with a theme that captured, you can see our little sun guy there, uh, really captures the feeling tone of the Bobs. It was coordinated with their birthday, uh, 60th anniversary, and so we created 60insolar.com, which isn't it's still there, folks. Um, but you can see down in the lower right-hand corner of our, um, of our image here that we had all of our you know, uh, our main um, uh, marketing partners um, properly identified with the, the logo. So this, um, and I'm going to just um, cover this briefly. I wanted to look at the creative elements. This was several months in the planning. It was a very, um, uh, had a lot of moving parts uh, in terms of a, a dedicated website. You're not necessarily going to do this quite this big, but it is, an, it is a kind of a reminder that it could be. Um, so we developed a, new, a website that brought together fan memories. This particular Bob's is 
draws a lot from Hollywood. It's a big automotive. There's a lot of automotive enthusiasts. A lot of people uh, were involved with it. I actually, uh, in the course of doing the research around this project, found out that my parents actually had one of their first dates. 60, you know, 50 some years ago um, at this particular Bob. So you never know what you're going to find up when, find when you dig deep. Uh, we had a solar dedication event, we had a party, we had extensive press campaign, video marketing, and social media. We made sure that all, uh, that we had covered the bases with all the stakeholder groups. Now you can see a little bit here in terms of some of the stakeholder groups involved. Uh, those included the local charity. In this particular case, this retail operation was very involved in their community. And this might, I'm sure this will be the case for many of your projects, where you've got a charity involved, and you can help that charity with visibility, potentially contributions, who knows? But by getting them involved, you broaden the stakeholder group, you broaden all of the entities that are involved, and yes, you do create a bigger job for yourself. I will be absolutely clear here. You create um, a bigger process with yourself when you have more moving parts in terms of team members, but ultimately you have an opportunity to make a much bigger splash. And again, to go back to celebrating your client's solar story. We were incredibly graced here in that Bill Nye was our spokesperson and our event MC. He was awesome. He brought the whole thing together. And here you can see, this is the owner of Bob's, here you can see one of those infamous plaques being presented. Um, so again, and the banner in the back, you, you know, everything kind of comes together there. Uh, we did branded signage and collateral. These were little table tents. So if you've got a retail customer that you're working with, you could potentially do a, 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 you know, a point of sale. You can do a video. Uh, on a TV if they've got it there. Think of all the places where you could tell their, sol their solar story and tie in that theme and make it uh, and broaden your ability to get more leads out of the project. Okay, so we did a video piece um, that was picked up by the Auto Channel. And so because the um, Bob's is really a an auto enthusiast sort of destination, and I thought I could play it for you. So. Okay, so that gives you kind of a feeling tone of, you know, the kinds of things that you could do, and by understanding your clients' groups and their, their particular consti constituencies or stakeholder groups that are involved in their organization, uh, that you can target uh, your press. So we, when we developed that video, that whole idea was to put it in the Bobs, to have it playing, to have it online. We did all of that with it, but we also included it in our press events. And now you've got even more opportunities in terms of what you can do by embedding a video on Facebook and getting it out on Twitter and, you know, you, lots of more opportunities are available in terms of video, so uh, in, in terms of promotion. So 
when you're looking at your event and when you're looking at your marketing planning and your budgeting, that's an opportunity for to say, if I brand it properly, like we did there with Canadian Solar, as you saw, we can get um, uh, co-op funds. And so again, it kind of brings it all to the loop that when you're looking at your assets, are you then, um, do you have these things available to you and could you develop it uh, in rec you know, to support this kind of an effort? And these events really do give you the opportunity to, um, to, to have deadlines and to bring everything together in a really powerful way. Okay, so we're going to pivot here just for a minute and we're going to address um, three pain points. And I, I thank you so much for hanging in here with me so far. Um, really, it's just been quite an honor to do this work on behalf of Energy Trust of Oregon. I can't tell you um, how much it's meant to me and my team to be able to uh, participate in this work and help um, particularly small and medium-sized uh, regional um, installers um, in Oregon and Washington and throughout uh, the United States and beyond, actually, uh, to do the best work that they can do. Uh, and to do it the most uh, effectively. So I want to kind of wrap up here with looking at the major pain points that have surfaced uh, in our research, the research of Energy Trust and the research of others um, related to how you run your business, the challenges that you face as an installation company. And so let's start out by just very briefly uh, without having you have to get upset, <laughs> you look at the many hats you wear. And um, Energy Trust in a 2015 survey found that contractors wear, on average, five different hats. So if you think about that, um, it's one of the joys of what we do in the industry in terms of building a business and having the satisfaction of seeing that come forth, but it's also incredibly challenging. You're doing advertising and marketing. You're doing incentive processing. You're doing residential PV sales and project management and commercial PV sales. So you have a lot going on in your world, and it's up to us to try to help you um, identify ways that you can do it um, more effectively. So the first pain point is managing marketing is tough. Um, Energy Trust of Oregon worked with Pam Cargill, who is just an amazing gal in the solar industry, and Kay Listy, her firm, did a 2016 survey. And they found in this survey of contractor allies um, that m marketing was um, the top most difficult thing. Managing the marketing function was the top uh, pain point that these um, that the, these owners, operators had in terms of running their business. So th these numbers are the combined of uh, very difficult and somewhat difficult. Sales and operations, that whole process uh, was next and tied for third, cash flow and accounting, component selection, and system design. So that really pinpoints that uh, marketing, it continues to challenge um, most of the installers in the industry. The second pain point that we that was identified, and this has de definitely come through in terms of this research and our discussions with solar installers in the market, is that you are almost always in competitive bid situations. And finally, you've got increased competition and price pressure. Um, so you know that that whole run to the bottom, as we've heard, or you know the you know, the commodity sort of pricing of something that really is, you know, deals with people's homes and their businesses, it's really construction, um, is something that you are all feeling. So we wanted to look at what could we, you know, how can we help in terms of marketing? So the first thing to deal with marketing management, and again, this is very compressed. So what we're trying to do is give you three tips for each one of these pain points. The first one is to create foundational pieces. Don't reinvent the wheel every time. Get your brand identity, your brand guide, your style guide, your customer profiles. Get these foundational pieces done, and then at least for a certain amount of time, you can use them over and over again. You don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. If you're dealing with an outside person, an outside consultant, an outside agency, you can hand them, here's our style guide. 
Um, keep to this. You, when you're looking at it, you don't have to wonder, is this how my logo should be? You can over and over again, you, you can make sure that they have followed those guidelines. They're using the right font. They're using the right responsive logo. You know, we're targeting our custo the right customer with these campaigns. You can save time and money. I cannot reinforce this enough. Second here is to integrate the disparate marketing software pieces that you have to a CRM. Now, many of you are not using a CRM yet, so you want to start with something that's really simple like Method or Insightly or, you know, you don't have to go to the big kahunas like Salesforce Goodbye. or Marcusi, Marcusi, Marketing Dynamics. Um, you can go to integrate, uh, you can go to CRMs that are more simple in terms of what they're doing. And then the third point here is that you secure more funds through your co-op so you can get more help. Um, okay, so three tips to effective marketing management. Second, we're going to competitive bid situations. Identify and consistently communicate your company's competitive strengths. This is really important. As a matter of fact, you're going to see this again here in a minute. Because if you are very clear on what your strengths are in the market, what is unique to your brand, and you consistently communicate those, not only in yourself and the, and the messaging of your sales team and all of your materials, but also online. This will help to strengthen your individual brand in the market. This will help you in competitive bid situations. And as the recent NREL Seeds um, uh, information revealed, you don't want to put your competitors down, um, and you want to actually just build up your own strengths. The other thing is work to get a referral marketing machine that is well-oiled, that is systematic, that, um, that you don't have to reinvent each time, and your CRM will come into play there as well. The other third thing here is reduced, reduce lost leads or the propensity for lost leads due to them falling through the cracks on an Excel spreadsheet or your response time. There is a lot of research available to you in terms of how fast you need to respond, if you're, particularly if you're buying leads online. That response time is critical, and the number of times you respond is critical. And so, you know, in those competitive bid situations, you want to work out very quickly whether this is a valuable lead and you need to be spending more time on it, um, and you need to get in touch with them, and you need to track the process all the way through. That will give you the best chance of winning that business. Okay, so competition in general. Again, we're starting out with establish and communicate your company's competitive strengths just because it's so darn important. Um, then dedicate time and resources to marketing function. We know that you're busy, you're wearing all those hats, but if you create a, a consistent sort of drumbeat, even if very small um, effort, and then you, you work through the activity, through the tracking, through the adjustment, and we've given you all those tools in order to do that, um, then you will find that it can build. It's like gardening. You might start small, but that consistency is important. And that will help you to identify what works and to pivot quickly from what doesn't work to what will work better. And then again here we're talking about leveraging a clear understanding of who your key customer groups are. You want to focus on those customers that create your most profitable business, that are your advocates, and duplicate them. Don't worry about what else anybody else is doing out there. Worry about and focus on the best customers for your business and your team that, that generate the best possible business that you have, um, and then replicate them. And you can use your customer profile or persona development tool to do that, and then that will help you to understand where to get more customers like them. And of course, the referral marketing is incredibly important here too. All right. So, where can you get all of this information online? We've given you energytrust.org uh, slash business development. Um, if you're a contractor ally, there's Insider's blog in their calendar. You can get it at our Identity3 slash Marketing Solar page in our blog. All of that information is there for you. There are recorded webinars. There are podcasts on, all, on subjects where we have uh, dived in. Um, on a particular subject, lots on social media, on graphics, on website building. Uh, so take advantage of all those free resources. 
Um, I'm going to give you my email here, uh, gwisemanidentity3.com. You can email me and let me know if you've got other ideas, um, other kinds of things that we can cover on the podcast moving forward, other things that we can inc incorporate into um, the program going forward. And again, I just, um, as we get to the end of our time here, have we got more questions? Okay, so we've got a question related to, uh, do you need to use some kind of project management software or something to develop a campaign? Um, <clears throat> if you're doing a solar dedication or any other campaign, of course you can use Excel. You can, um, you can, uh, I, I love Excel, so I use Excel a lot, uh, but you can, you can articulate all the different steps. You can use the tool that we've given you uh, in, and get all of the high points and articulate that information to the tool once you've worked through it on an Excel spreadsheet. Um, there are different kinds of project management uh, resources available if there, are, or if there are some that people are using. Um, that would that are helpful. Please tweet that out at hashtag marketing solar and let everybody know um, what you're finding to be helpful for you. Uh, and uh, we'll go from there. We'll get that information out. Uh, we will be putting out a survey here in a little bit to uh, get your feedback on um, how this webinar was uh, for you. And again, that's another wonderful place that you can give us your feedback. Again, I just want to say thank you to Energy Trust of Oregon and to Jenny Hall for all of the support that she's given us um, to get all of this material together over the last six months. Um, take advantage of this material. Uh, give us insight on what you think might be helpful in the future. Uh, watch for some exciting announcements for other places this material is going to be available. And I just want to thank everybody for showing up today and being with us. And um, I hope you have a wonderful summer.